video, we're going to evaluate the limit. Okay, so I'm gonna give you several examples on how to evaluate this limit. The first one, very simple, okay? There's no restriction in, in the domain. There is no um, holes or vertical asymptotes. So all you have to do is to plug in negative two into x and you'll get the limit. So we plug in negative two into x. Notice that I'm not writing the limit anymore because once you apply the operation of limits, you don't have to write it anymore. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. 12 plus 5 is 17. So the limit when x approaches negative 2 is equal to 17. Now this one is a tricky problem. Notice that, notice that this is a constant function of 4. Okay, There's no x, therefore this is just equal to 4. Here, again, there's no um, there's no issues here. You just plug in negative three into the x, so negative three cubed minus two. That's negative twenty-seven minus two, which is negative twenty-nine. Okay. okay, let's continue. Okay, here there is a a problem with with the with the value of eight, so z is not defined at eight. Therefore, for this function, uh, eight is not in the domain. Now, we plug in eight for the limit on top and bottom. You get eight squared minus sixty-four over eight minus eight. Now, this is sixty-four minus sixty-four over a minus a, which gives you zero divided by zero. And this is not, I repeat, this is not equal to one necessarily. It could be one, but not, not in this case, okay? So this is called a indeterminate form. Once you have an indeterminate form, we have to manipulate our function. So how are we gonna do it? We're gonna factorize. So this is the limit when x approach, when z, sorry, approaches 8 of z minus 8 times z plus 8 over z minus 8. Okay? Now, notice that z minus 8 divided by z minus 8 is equal to 1, okay, given that z is not 8. So now we're left with z approaches 8 of z plus 8. And in this case, we can just plug in 8 and get 8 plus 8, which is 16. So at 8, we have a removable. This continuity. Okay. Which means that it's not defined at 8, but the limit does exist and it's equal to 16. Now, for the next example... If I plug in one fourth, I'm going to have the same problem. We'll get one minus one equals zero, one minus one equals zero, we'll get zero over zero. Therefore, I have to manipulate this fraction in order to get my limit. Notice that on the top we factorize and cancel the term that gives you zero over zero. That's the same thing I want to be able to do here. And we can, because the, the denominator can factor into 1 minus 4t, 1 plus 4t. Now, we're almost there. The tricky part is that 4t minus 1 and 1 minus 4t are not the same thing. But we can make it the same thing if we factorize a negative 1, either one. Either on the numerator or denominator, doesn't matter which one you choose. So we factorize it, and then this becomes 1 minus 4t. Okay? And then keep going here. 
limit when t approaches one fourth. One minus four t divided by one minus four t. It's going to be one. Okay, so we're left with negative one on the numerator and one plus four t on the denominator. So now we plug in the limit. So you get negative one over one plus four times one fourth. <coughs> So it's negative 1, 1 plus 1, negative 1 over 2. So again, at t, t can be 1 fourth. So we have a removable discontinuity at 1 fourth. Because the limit does exist, but it's not equal to, it's not defined at 1 fourth. Negative 2 here. Um, notice the pattern. This problem is going to happen the same thing. Okay? So I'm going to just go straight to factorization. How do we factorize x squared plus 5x plus 6? Well, what two factors of 6 when you add them gives you 5? Well, 2 and 3. Therefore, this factors into x plus 2 and x plus 3. In the denominator, it factors between x plus 2 and x minus 2. Again, we can get rid of the x plus 2 factors. We're left with the limit when x approaches negative 2 of x plus 3 over x minus 2. And we plug it in. Once we plug in negative 2, you get negative 2 plus 3 over negative 2 minus 2. That's negative 1, I mean plus 1 over negative 4, it's negative 1 fourth. Okay? And again, similar to the previous problem, x can't, is not defined at negative 2, so we have a removable discontinuity at negative 2. This one, same procedure, now we gotta factorize both. Now here, it's gonna take me a little bit longer to factorize, because I'm going to apply the x method, okay? So I'm going to apply them on both at the same time. So on the top, 3 times 2 is 6. Two factors of positive 6, that when you add them, gives you negative 7, negative 6, and negative 1. So you're going to get 3x squared minus 6x minus x plus 2. In the bottom, negative 6 times negative 1 is positive 6. Two factors of positive 6 that will add to 5. Um, two factors of positive 6 that will add to 5, 2, and 3. So it's going to be negative 6x squared plus 3x plus 2x minus 1. Okay. So we write the limit again because we haven't applied it yet. Now we factor the first two terms. In the last two terms, first two terms, and the last two terms, we get factor of 3x, and we're left with x minus 2. We can factor of negative 1, and we're left with x minus 2. That's on the top. On the bottom, we factor of three, uh, negative 3x. We're left with 2x um, minus 1. And we factor of 1, we're left with 2x minus 1. <clears throat> okay, so now we have the limit when x approaches one third. Notice that x minus 2 repeat, therefore it's factorizable again. So x minus 2 times 3x minus 1. And in the bottom, same deal, 2x minus 1 times negative 3x plus 1. Okay, notice in order to make these two equal, I have to factorize a negative 1 out. I'm going to factorize a negative 1. Notice that multipl multiplication is associative, associative and commutative. So that negative 1 can be put in front and then on top. I'm going to write it on top. So x minus 2, 3x minus 1, 2x minus 1, 3x minus 1. Notice that the negative 1 came from here. Okay, so if you factor negative 1, you get 3x minus 1. Okay? But you can write it on the numerator. 
now the terms um, equal to 1, so you're left with negative 1 times x minus 2 over 2x minus 1. Now you can plug in the 1 third. Um, so let's plug in the 1 third, so 1 third minus 2. 2 times 1 third minus 1. Common denominator, so 1 third minus 6 over 3. 2 thirds minus 3 over 3. Okay, 1 minus 6 is negative 5 over 3. 2 minus 3 is negative 1 over 3. Negative times negative is positive, 5 over 3. Negative 1 third. When you have two fractions, and they're dividing, oops, oh, sorry. You multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So it's gonna be negative three over one. You multiply across negative 15 over three, which is negative five. So here again, X is not defined at one third, okay? So we have a whole at one third but x is not defined either at one half. So we have a vertical asymptote at one half. And it's good to start knowing the differences between the two um, for our next videos. Okay, let's keep going. Same thing here. Now we have a difference of cubes. If you forget how to factorize a cube, you can always divide, okay? Now, so the difference of cubes factors into P minus 4 times P squared plus AP plus 16. It's not AP. Okay, now you need to remember this formula for the AP testing, okay? So it's A cubed minus B cubed is A minus B times A squared plus AB plus B squared, okay? That's the factorization of this difference of cubes, okay? Now, let's continue. In the bottom, we have 4 minus P. We factorize a negative 1. We'll have P minus 4. Okay. Now, remember, P is not defined at 4. This function is not defined at 4, but because the factors cancel, we have a whole, meaning is a removable discontinuity. Okay. And I forgot to write the limit. And that was an ugly four. Let me choose a smaller sizing. There we go. Okay. So now let's continue. The negative one, I can put it in the numerator. Negative one. I keep forgetting my, my limits. So. There you go. Okay. So limit when p approaches 4, negative 1 times p squared plus 4p plus 16. Okay, now we plug in the limit, we get negative 1 times 4 squared plus 4 times 4 plus 16, <coughs> which is equal to negative 1, 16 plus 16. 16, which is negative 3 times 16, which is 3 times 6 is 18, so, and then negative 48, and that will be your answer for the limit, okay? Let's keep going here. Here, we have the, a square root now, a cube root. 
So if we plug in negative 1, what happens? We get negative 3 minus 5. It's going to be the cube root of 3 times negative 1 minus 5 over 25 times negative 1 minus 2. It's going to be the cube root of negative 3 minus 5 over negative 25 minus 2. which is going to be the cube root of negative 8 over negative 27. Now the cube root of a division is the same thing as the division of cube roots. What is the cube root of negative 8? It is negative 2. What is the cube root of negative 27? It is negative 3, so 2 thirds. Now notice that two-thirds, I mean negative one, is defined on <coughs> of this function, therefore at negative one is continuous. So when k equals negative one, you have a continuity. Now this is a square root. So for square roots, you have to be careful for negative numbers inside the square root. Now if I plug in two, I get zero in the top, and I get zero in the denominator. Therefore, at two, we're going to have either a whole or a vertical asymptote. Or in this case, it's a whole because it gives you zero over zero. Now, the cool thing about the limit operator is it allows you to go inside the square root. So you can find the square root of the limit of x approaches two of x squared minus four over 2x squared plus x minus 6. Okay, so now we continue. We factor the numerator. Okay, so x minus 2, x plus 2, and we factor the denominator. 2 times negative 6 is negative 12. Two factors of negative 12 that will add to uh, 1 will be positive 4 and negative 3. So you're going to have 2x squared, positive 4x, minus 3x, minus 6. So the limit when x approaches 2 of x minus 2, x plus 2. Here we factor the first two and the last two. So it's going to be factored by 2x, so it's going to be x plus 2, factored by negative 3 x plus 2. So again, the square root, the limit when x approaches 2 of x minus 2, x plus 2, and then 2x minus 3, x plus 2. Okay. Oh, I guess it doesn't give you 0 in the denominator. Therefore, it's just zero. So it's going to be the square root of zero over two times two is four minus three is one. Two plus two is four. So this is just the square root of zero, which is zero. Okay. In the case that it would have been negative two instead, the limit, then we would have get rid of it and we'll then plug it into the into the fraction. Okay. So now this one is tricky. Sorry about the moving around. This one, whenever you have a square root, doesn't matter if it's in the numerator or denominator, and you have outside a number being added or subtracted, it could be square root of three, it could be plus one, it could be minus two, it could be one half. If the limit gives you 0 over 0, then you have to multiply by the conjugate. And in these two cases, it does give you 0 over 0. Now, the conjugate of the, fra of the radical, in this case, would be square root of x plus 3, and then plus outside square root of 3. Okay? Now, the reason we multiply by the conjugate is because 
the terms with radicals are going to disappear. When you do multiplication of conjugates, do not, do not distribute the terms that are not being conjugated. Therefore, x, leave it outside. Okay? This is the limit when x approaches 0 of x times the conjugate. So x plus 3 plus radical 3. In the denominator, we FOIL. Okay? So first, square root of x plus 3 times square root of x plus 3 is x plus 3. Then plus square root of 3, square root of x plus 3. Okay. Minus square root of 3, square root of x plus 3. And then minus square root of 3 times square root of 3 is 3. Okay. And notice that these two terms equal 0 when added together. You're left with the limit when x approaches 0 of x times radical x plus 3 plus radical 3 over x plus 3, which is this term, and then minus 3, which is this one. And notice what happens. 3 minus 3 is 0, so you're left with x over x, and that's what we want because we want to get rid of the term that's giving me 0 over 0, and in this case is x. So again, at 0 we have a whole, this function. So you're left with x plus 3 plus square root of 3. If we plug in 0 now, you're going to have radical 3 plus radical 3, which is 2 radical 3. Excellent. And same process for the second one. Okay. We multiply by the conjugate. So 3y plus 2 plus radical 2. 3y plus 2 plus radical 2. Every time you multiply by the conjugate, the middle terms cancel. Okay. Again, this time, do not distribute the y in the denominator. And then I'm going to jump the step of foiling, and I'm going to just write the terms that uh, stay in the multiplication. So it's going to be 3y plus 2 minus 2 over y and then times 3y plus 2 plus radical 2. Okay? Notice again, the 2 minus 2 cancel out, so you're left with y approaches 0 of 3y over y times radical 3y plus 2, and then plus radical 2. And then that helps me get rid of the y's, so now I'm left with 3 divided by square root of 3y plus 2 plus radical 2. If I plug in 0 for y, I get 3 over radical 2 plus radical 2. Notice I don't need the limit anymore because I just uh, uh, found it. So 3 over 2 radical 2. And that will be your answer. You can rationalize it if you want. <coughs> now, a lot of times we have in the AP test problems like this one. This is a piecewise function. Now, it's usually it will ask us to find the limit, to find if it's continuous, and to determine what type of continuity or discontinuity it is. So in this case, it says find the limit when x approaches 4. Now, the general, the definition of the limit to be existed is that the limit from the left has to be equal to the limit from the right which has to be equal to the limit in order to, to exist. Okay. So this is what we're going to find. We're going to find these three limits in order to find the last one. So we're going to start with the limit when x approaches 4 from the left q of x. 
Well, the question is, which one should we choose if it's 4 from the left? Well, clearly, x not equal to 4 means that it's everything except 4. So either from the left or from the right is both x squared minus 16 over x minus 4. Okay, so it's going to be this one. Now, again, this one is the same one as um, la the last ones that we just solved. We have to factorize x minus 4, x plus 4, x minus 4. Notice that x minus 4 and x minus 4 cancel out, and you're left with a limit. And x approaches 4 from the left of x plus 4. We will plug in 4. 4 plus 4 equals 8. Now, this same procedure applies for the limit when x approaches 4 from the right. Okay? Same procedure. Therefore, the limit when x approaches 4 of q of x is 8. But it says that at 4, at 4 equals 3, which is not equal to 8. OK? Therefore, at x equals 4, we have a removable discontinuity. Okay? And that will be the entire video for today. If you like the video, subscribe to MultiWow or share it to your friends or watch it again to do more study. Thanks, you guys. Have a great day.